Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today is, yes, it's a federal holiday, so I'm still giving you a video today. So uh, stay tuned and watch the video, guys. Uh, to get a little, to go into detail a little bit about myself, if you're a first time watching the video, I'm a lot of price action trader, pretty much. I trade the uh, immediate future, so I trade the future markets, primarily the S&P 500 futures. If you look at my channel, you will see where I trade this particular market each and every day. Not only talking about certain topics, but uh, giving out tips and hints, or even the strategy of how I um, trade. I trade the same strategy every day, pretty much, and that's using the pullback uh, method. Um, and you can trade it across any, you know, uh, any market. It doesn't really matter what the market is, okay? But uh, price action for me was actually hard until I actually figured out this particular strategy um, and, and trading. And once I figured out this particular strategy and coupled it with, pretty much I scalp the market. I'm a scalper. I don't do any swing trading or position trading. Um, but I like to scalp. I'm a day trader by heart and I like to get in and get out. So, you know, to me, price action was extremely hard until I figured out a method or a strategy, actually a strategy, you know, a strategy that worked best for me uh, in getting in and get down the market, which I'm going to share with you guys today. And we'll go through a couple of examples on the charts here. So I don't want to make this a long winded video today. So if you, if this is your first time subscribing to the channel, please follow the content. Please follow today's video if you like the content. Then uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel as well as drop a like on the video. For those who have already subscribed to the channel and um, turned on that, you know, that bell notification, that post notification, uh, thank you for doing so. If you don't mind, go ahead and do, the, do doing that. If you have not, that way we'll, you will, uh, you know, never miss one of the videos that I upload. It ensure that you always get one of the videos uh, pushed to you via email or, you know, mobile device or however you have your um, notification set up. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know. In all honesty, the best way to learn how to trade is basically following market structure. You have to be able to read market structure as number one rule if you want to be able to uh, trade the markets effectively. Um, I'm a scalper, like I said. I like to, to scalp and I like to use the pullback strategy pretty much of just looking for price to pull back to areas of support and resistance uh, on demand. More so, I look for the, the price to pull into the area of supply and demand, which gives me a greater opportunity and a higher probability of taking trades at certain entry points. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which particular market you actually trade. If you're a Forex trader, you know, if you trade the E-mini futures, uh, E-mini futures um, could be the, you know, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the uh, the Dow, which is similar there is the, the YM, the Russell, the YT, uh, the, excuse me, the RTY, um, any of the commodities within the future markets. It doesn't really matter, guys. Or if you trade Forex pairs, you know, on the uh, Forex, um, even stocks. It doesn't really matter, guys. I mean, the same strategy, same rule applies when looking for opportunities in the market to actually scalp and scalping to me is, you know, it's easy for me to get into scalping because um, long, you know, trend trading or position style trading to me is like I can get in. I don't like the, um, when you get into the trade and, and how price kind of pulls back and you kind of get scared about if it's going to, you know, come past your area of stop or, you know, it's basically when you're up in the market and the market starts to pull back, it's like, wow, I'm profitable. You know, I'm, I'm starting to make profit. And um, the market is going in my direction, and it starts to pull back front, you know, uh, against you. I don't like that. I like to go ahead and wait for the setups, execute the setups, you know, when price gets to them. And I see a setup, get in, get out, wait for the next one, get in and get out. So I like to do that a few times, and, and taking high probability uh, trades, just using the, the scalping strategy, um, you know, the pullback strategy, uh, where you know, which from which I just basically scalp the market. Okay, and scalping the market could be for several ticks, could be set for several points, you know. As long as you're profitable when you're able to make money, uh, you know, I have a, a, a golden rule that I always use is, is, you know, if you have a losing trade, which we're all going to have, we all are going to have losing trades, no matter what type of trader you are. Um, the, the goal to the, the key to it is not to uh, have a losing day. Always be in the green, never in the red. OK. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the pullback strategy and how it actually works and looking at the, you know, the market itself. Um, so what we have here is a swing, you know, price moving to the upside and then price turn has the. Um, uh turns direction starts so uh, swinging to the downside correct okay so basically we have one leg going up one leg coming down and that's that's how i like to look at the market from a two-legged standpoint um okay so as price is pushing higher and making higher highs and higher lows okay so price pushes up we have a high here we have a um a higher low here and price higher high higher low higher high higher low so price is pushing up all right then price pivots right here turns and 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 uh, pushes lower correct what does it do okay uh as as it um when it pivots right here to the downside it breaks market structure okay so 
as price is forming these swings to the upside, okay? Basically taking out structure, meaning making a high here, low here, breaks higher, taking out structure right here, which is this high, breaks higher, pulls back, breaks higher, breaking structure right here, making a high right here. Then it turns and pivots, breaking to the downside, breaking market structure. So it's breaking back through structure, okay? Where price was creating swings to the upside. So pr price pushes lower, breaking a low here, okay? So I mentioned about supply areas, okay? So this becomes an area of supply, okay? So as price starts to break lower, Breaking through market structure, we, it creates an area, uh, not only a resistance, but supply here in this area, correct? Okay. So when price pushes higher, pushes higher from this point here, okay? After the breakdown, all right? Have supply sitting here. It starts to push higher. It turns back around, starts making, you know, swings to the upside. And there's supply right here. So when price turns back around, gets back to this area up top here, basically in this area right here, you know, we can we can ask, you know, uh project that something's gonna you know happen, the market's gonna pause, stop, or bounce. So you look for a rejection in this area here, you know. Um this would have been an opportunity to go short here because price broke lower, breaking market structure, creating an area of supply on its way down. On the way back up, now that we have supply in this area, we can go ahead and kind of uh mark this off right here. Okay. When price gets back to this area. All right, we can look for something to, you know, happen, okay? So um, price projects this area, you know, when it rejects, you, you take a short and price comes back down to this area, pretty much the level below it, correct? Okay, so now we have that. All right, but eventually on the pullback, so price actually pulls back, it, it, it reaches a, a support level below, and then it starts to push higher. This was actually a short right here because we tapped into the area supply, price pulled back to the area supply, Wait for the rejection, take your entry short, you know, and you make sure you look below, just right below you to see if there's any area of uh, support um, below that can pause and stop the market, okay? And right here is a level, okay? So price bounces off this level here. Then it turns around, okay, on the pullback, which is higher, pulls back, then it starts to break higher, okay? So it breaks through the area of uh, resistance, which is supply, okay? So when it pulls back, okay, uh, again, the pullback to this area right here, okay, is is not a significant pullback. Um, it could possibly be a long entry right here. Uh, this is actually on, like I said, the pullback strategy. Looking for a pullback, I'm scalping, okay? So you can actually go long here if you see the rejection, okay? If you wait for the rejection, you can switch over to your full range, say, for instance. If you notice rejection on there where you're getting kind of that W formation, um, you can you can take an entry long, and it probably it would be probably for about, but it's just a few ticks, maybe uh, six to eight ticks back to this area right here. So we're talking about, um, let's see, 4688 to 4691. Yeah, you know, like I said, about eight ticks back to this area right here where price could actually pause that because you have a little high right here. Then price continues pushing higher. You know, we start to make, you know, higher highs and higher lows. So on each, on, on each one of these pullbacks, okay, back down to an area of support, okay? So price pushes up, pulls back. Pushes higher, makes a high here, pulling back to an area of support below, which was resistance. Um, you can all, you, you know, you can always be looking for uh, rejection on the pullback, okay? On the pullback, meaning, I'll show you. Price pushes up, pulls back, pushes higher, pulls back, okay? And then basically right here, when price pulls back, you can look for the rejection to go low, okay? Price breaks higher, okay? We have, once again, support in this area. Price pulls back. You can look for the rejection on a pullback to go long, okay? Scalping. Price pushes higher, okay? And then there's another, you know, we have uh, support here. But in this case here, price uh, actually breaks through the area of support, okay? So what happened here, let's blow it up. Price pushes up, pulls back, pushes higher, okay? It must, if you look to your, to your left of your chart somewhere, you'll see where there's an area of um, resistance out to the left side of your chart there. That price rejected that area. It pulled back, what did it do? It pulled right back into the area of support here. Bounce or reject it. You can look for an entry to, to go long, but it's gonna be very short because you have resistance right here at the top, okay? All right, so this resistance area, if, if as it breaks down, pushes lower, it creates an area of supply back above, okay? So price pushes down. Test the support, okay? Can't push any higher. Wants to swing to the downside, so it swings down, 
pushes back, pulling its way to the downside, breaks lower. At that point, this area up here becomes an area of supply where price is definitely going to come back and test, okay? A, a, a supply area. It will test that area, all right? So uh, when price breaks lower, breaking through structure, which was a swing to the upside, breaking that market structure there, back to the downside, okay? Uh, we have an area of supply right here. Got it? All right. Okay, so price turns back around, okay? Pulls back, supply setting up here. What happens? Price pushes higher, swinging to the upside, making swings, you know, uh, um, uh, higher highs, higher lows, and little swings to the upside, okay? It breaks through resistance right here, okay? Breaks through resistance. So it breaks up. Let's get our error out, okay? Breaking back to the upside, breaking this area of resistance here. Pull us back, okay? So basically we have a swing form now, okay? Breaking through this area of resistance. So on the pullback, you know, we're looking for, um, you know, an area. This is this out here is, is, is demand now, but price can pretty much, um, you know, bounce anywhere uh, within its leg to the upside. So on a pullback, okay? So we have these swings here and price can, you know, pretty much bounce, but we, we, we do want to see price kind of pull back to the lower area where, you know, there's um, a demand at, say for instance, but in this case here, price pulls back and it just pulls back to this area right here. You have to be looking at all these little areas where price can bounce at, okay? All right, um, so price actually pull back to this area right here, all right, right here. So what we wanna see price do is now break back above this area right here where I have drawn this arrow. When price breaks back above that area, clears this area here, the prior area resistance, okay, which is now support, back to the upside, we can go long, but we have to be mindful because the long is gonna be, you know, we have a high sitting right here. So uh, that could be an opportunity to go long at the close of, you know, basically this green candle to the upside right here, price taking out the swing high right here, uh, or area resistance right here, back to the upside, okay? Then price pushes higher, swings back, okay? You know, once again, okay, breaking higher, making a higher high. Uh, we have resistance right here. I'm excuse me, support right here. So we just broke this area of resistance right here, all right? You know, these are all little swings, so you have to be mindful because you have stops right above you, which is the the uh, prior area right above you of uh, resistance. So when price push higher, breaking, breaking through this area, which was resistance, which was a high, and pulling back. Now this is the high, which is now resistance, pulling back to the area of support. We have, you know, uh, you know, we have resistance right above. Uh, we could possibly go long here. I'll show you. If we went long at the close of uh well no really to be honest with you because uh we the, the poor the pullback was so short here okay the pullback was so short here that you may have um if you tried to go long even at the close of this candle right here you know we have resistance sitting right here so you don't have much of an area you want to be looking for greater areas on a pullback okay for price to um for you for for a, a better or high, higher probability trade now one thing i always like to do too is kind of match up well, I'll show you that here in a minute, guys. Okay, so let's continue our, our, our process of when price is moving higher and looking for, you know, um, areas to scout within the market based on the pullback strategy, okay? And like I said, you can you can do this regardless of the market. It doesn't matter if it's Forex. It doesn't matter if it's the mini futures. It doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's the future market. All right, so price continues pushing higher, right? You know, pulling back, pushing higher, okay? Then it topples out right here and it starts to push lower. Now we have... Um, a high sitting right here at the top, right? So as price pushes lower, what does it do? It starts to break structure back to the downside, okay? So let's get our arrow here, okay? Pushes down. Um, actually, let's do this because I'll show you. There could have been opportunity here, small little opportunity on a pullback, okay? So uh, not rectangle. Arrow. Sorry about that, guys. No, 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 no. Where's that? There we go. Okay. Arrow here. Price pushes. Um, it's not drawing. Okay, there we go. Down. Pulls back. Breaks lower. Okay. What does it break? It breaks structure right here. This swing that swung to the upside here. Swing it up, pulling back, swing it, you know, this swing to the upside. It breaks lower, breaking the structure here. So basically going on a pullback. Okay. On a pullback. Back to an area of um, support above, 
um, you can look for a, basically a short entry. So we'll price push down, pull, well, pull it lower, pull it back, and then uh, swung lower, breaking the structure here. When it pull, pull back, you can look for an entry short, okay? Um, and, and, and that's basically on every swing to the upside and downside, basically on the pullback, guys. You can be looking for opportunities on rejection, on the pullback, when price pulls back to the level, when there's support resistance, you can look for the rejection and, and, and take that entry. If price is pushing higher on the pullback, you look for the rejection on the pullback, and you can go low. Same thing on, on the swing to the downside, okay? Price swing to the downside, break a structure uh, on the pullback, wait for rejection, and you go short, okay? So, all right, let's keep it going. Um, let's see, arrow, okay? So now price, uh, let's see, swings to the swings down, okay? Pulls, pulls back, pushes lower, okay? So what happens here? Swings down, pulls back, pushes lower, breaking structure, okay? Breaking the low right here on the swing to the upside, okay? What happens then? Price pulls right back to resistance, okay? Now here's the opportunity to go short. Okay, right here. Wait for the rejection. Okay, price closes below this area here. Okay, price closes below that area and it can't push any higher. Go short, back down to the low. As simple as that. Okay, now here's the thing I want to talk about as well. How do I incorporate the volume profile into my trading? All right, the volume profile is this vertical tool that I use to the left, to the, excuse me, to the right hand side of the screen here. All right, that helps me. As um, confirmation, in a sense, I don't use it just to trade right from it, but I use it once I work a level. All right. So when price swings to the downside, I say, okay, price is breaking structure back to the downside. It's broke this low here. Swing it down, pull it back, swing it down. Hasn't broke the structure yet. Pulls back, makes a lower low here. Um, boom. Pulls back to resistance. Where do we sit at? At the top, where do we sit at on, at, on the, the volume profile? When price pull back here, we can just continue this line out. Okay, we'll do this. Price pulls back right above pretty much this area of high volume right here. So I always say sell the highs and buy the lows. So one, price break structure to the downside. Breaking structure here. Okay? So that's one. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. That's one. Price breaking structure to the downside. Breaking the structure just low here. Two, pulls back, pulls back to a swing level, okay, which is an area of uh, resistance, okay, all right, um, and I say three, I'll look over to the right and see where does the, the uh, level that I marked, what does it sit in reference to the geographical area of the, of the volume profile, it sits at the upper end of the volume profile, this, this volume note here, price pulls back, Okay, price pulls back to the upper end of the volume node. Okay, I'm looking for rejection at that point to take a, a short back down to this low right here. Okay, so price, let's do this. See, pushes lower back to the low. Then it pulls back and gives you a second chance again. Okay, boom, second opportunity to go short again. Price breaks back below the swing. Okay, at the upper end of the high volume area. Look for the rejection, take it short. In this case here, all right, so some people would trade this because they'll say, oh, it's a double top right here, okay? Double top at area at the area of support. I mean, excuse me, area of resistance, okay? They're going to go short. They're going short. Price breaks lower, breaks the low, and pushes lower, testing the low of this swing to the upside now, the low right here. Now we have price testing this low right here, okay? All right. All right, so let's take a look at this too. Look, look, look at this. Now, what happens next? Price pushes lower. Okay, and what does it do? Okay, it comes to this area right here. Okay, this area right here. All right. Now, here's a swing to the upside, pull back, price pushing higher. Okay, so we have support sitting right here. This area right here is an area. Of support in this area right here okay you can see when price pushed higher it pulled back pushed higher making a swing price pulls back to the area of support right here right here rejects pushes higher pulls back within the swing again 
okay? Push that within the swing again, okay? And it doesn't break to the downside. It does not break the low to the downside. It rejects out of that area again, pushes higher. Eventually, you can go long. You know, once price breaks back above this area here, you know, you can look for long entry, okay, on a pullback, okay? So, uh, what I'm trying to say is price is pushing lower, okay? It comes back to this same area right here again, guys. Comes back to the same area. When it pushes lower, it has not broke this area, this low here, okay? It's testing it. It's testing it. And this this was the area where price, when price pulls back here to this low right here, this low right here was testing this swing right here. The swing right here. So price pushes up, pulls back, pushes higher. Let's show it to you. Pushes up, pulls back, pushes up, pulls back, testing the swing here, pushes higher, pulls back, testing the swing here. Go long when it when it breaks back above this line right here. Pushes up, pulls back, pushes higher, pulls right back into the swing right here. Okay. Same swing where price came back and tested it here, here. Boom, now it's testing it again, okay? All right, so now when price, we see price still kind of kind of pushing to the downside, but still has not broke this area here. Has not broke this low here. What happens? Price turns back around, pushes higher, okay? This is the area we need to see it break back above, this swing area right here, if it wants to push higher and stay above it, okay? Pushes higher, okay? So it has not, let's see here. Let me take a look here. Okay, it did, it, did make, it made a low right here, okay? Oops. Sorry about that. I'm trying to erase that. So it did, when it swung down here, it made a low here, okay? It did make a low here. But it's testing the same area here again to swing to the upside, okay? Where price rejected once, twice, Pulling back into it again, does not want to push lower, breaking the low here, okay? Even though it swung down, pull back, push lower, making a low here, it turns back around, breaking back into the structure this, uh, this, uh, this swing right here. Pushes up, okay? And what we want to see price do is one, I want to see it price stay price, price stay above this area right here, okay? Two, I want to see it also um, stay above this area right here, okay? So mark the line or the arrow i'm gonna see it stay above this area here why you ask that because price pull pushed up on a pullback i want to see it stay above the mouth of that swing right there and it does so price pushes up pulls back okay so one it broke back above the swing right here okay that gives me good confirmation two it pulls back okay because it's broke it back into this swing as well when price breaks back above and stays above this area and above this line here, I'm long. I'm long, okay? Okay? Because price is pulled back into an area of support, broke back into an area of resistance to the upside, pulled back to an area of support right here, staying above the, the mouth of the swing here. When it breaks back, uh, the candle closes green, I'm long. That gave me, you know, pretty much three areas of confirmation, okay? One. Pull back to an area of support where it already tested it once, twice. I want to see it if it's going to stay, you know, above this swing as well. Okay, it does. Here's a swing to the downside as well. One, it stays above this arrow right here, which is a prior area of support. Two, breaks back into the area of resistance, which is this area right here, which is this swing. Three, it breaks it back, uh, pulls back. Okay, and uh, it doesn't push any lower, rejects, pushes higher. The close of the green candle, I'm going long. Also, we're at the lower end of the, of the volume profile as well, which I say buy the lows. Okay, so these are some examples of how you know you have to pay attention to market structure and how price is moving according to price action to look for good um, areas of the market which are which can turn to be high probability areas to trade from. Okay, like I say, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're trading the, the, the futures or the Forex, this is how you can scout the market each and every day as I do, uh, you know, and make money in the market. You don't have to be a position or a swing trader putting on trades and then watching price, you know, uh, you get into an entry, maybe a good, in, a good area to get into a trade at and then price pushes up. If you're not used to, you know, seeing 
you know, um, watching price push higher and pulling back, it's going to do that. Price has ebbs and flows, and and you can be in a good trade. You can actually be in a good trade on position or, or a, a swing trade opportunity, but price is going to pull back because, you know, there's levels that you don't see if you're trading off like a one-hour chart. Um, well, I say one-hour chart because some people trade off a higher time frame than that. But um, there's going to be small levels. There's going to be levels that you're not going to be able to see on those on those charts where price is going to pause at, pull back, and say, well, I'm up, now I'm pulling back. And that scares a lot of people out of the market because they, they feel like they're up and then as price pulls back, they jump out and then price continues in a direction. And they're like, wow, I could have made an extra two or $3,000. Yep, that's how it works, guys. So that's why I like trading. Um, I look at a higher time frame, which you should always do is look at a higher time frame and then kind of scale back on your, to when, you, when you get ready to make entries, looking at what's going on on the uh, lower time frame chart. And I'll go in detail more about that in another video as far as, you know, um, looking at a higher time frame chart first. Depend, uh, 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 forming, not say forming, but you need to figure out what direction the market is in and then looking at a lower time frame chart waiting for price to show you that direction, okay? Or confirm it with and confluence with the higher time frame, okay? Because you got, the, the two kind of have to go hand in hand. If you're trading against the, the, the longer time frame chart, you're going to lose, more likely. It's, you know, you, you can take take trades and you can think that you're, you know, um, doing okay but at some point you keep doing it and the market's going to uh come back against you so be in the same direction moving in the same direction as the high time frame is always going to give you the higher probabilities what i'm trying to say guys that's going to do it for this for this uh video today i hope this helps you out guys you know understanding you know kind of look at the market from a two-legged standpoint you always want to see when you're looking for opportunities you know here's a leg to the upside as price is pulling back okay i'm geared now my mind I'm, we're pulling back we're pulling back into, into some levels here. We're pulling back into some areas of support here, okay? Okay, and, and I want to start looking to see um, the price bounce in those areas, like when price pushed up here, pull back once, the swing here, bounced out of it, pushed higher. Two, came back again, bounced, it, it, it bounced here, bounced, bounced out of it. Now this was, uh, it actually came into the area of demand here, bounced out of it, pushed higher, broke above. Again, price comes back, three, for the third time. For the third time, it's coming back to that same area again. Look for opportunities like that where prices has upheld or um, kind of held its ground there prior to. So look always to the left of your chart to kind of see what happens. When price starts to move to the back to the downside here, kind of forming the legs of the downside are starting to, and I start to see it breaking, breaking market structure to the downside and breaking structure, making lower lows, um, lower highs and lower lows. I'm looking to the left to see areas in the market where the market may have you know held up uh, once or twice, you know, just kind of seeing what price maybe bounced at on pullbacks. Pulled up here, pulled back, pushed higher, forming a swing, you know, making a higher, higher, higher low, and then comes back, bounces out of that area. Price held that area of support right there, okay? Pushed higher, pulled back again, held the area of support, pushed back higher again, came back, held the area of support, and bounces and pushes higher again, okay? So you look for opportunities like that. To become greater uh, gr good areas of uh, uh, support and resistance, and I like to see price kind of pull back uh, further back into the area of um, uh, the swing, which is an area of supply and demand. Like right here, when price is pushing lower, right here, okay, and then pull back, okay, pushes lower. All right, price starts to break back, st starts to break structure on the way down, right? Okay, now when price pushed down here, made a low, pull back and pushes lower. There is the man sitting right here, okay? All right, so this is kind of why when price got back to that area right here, what did it do? It bounced right there. It bounced, okay? Because there was, the, uh, I'm not. I'm sorry, guys, not demand, supply. Supply sitting in this area, okay? So um, supply is going to be tucked away at the upper end most of the time, of a, uh, at the upper end of a swing, and demand is going to be tucked away at the lower end of a swing, is what I'm trying to say. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys like the content, you know, please drop me a like on the video, you know, covering, you know, ways that you can look for opportunities to scout within a market, regardless of if you're trading the Forex or the futures or whatever market you particularly trade, guys. You can use the same strategy, okay? Pullback strategy. All right, guys, talk, talk to you and see you in the next video. Uh, today's, a, 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 of course, a bank holiday, so the markets aren't open. Um, and I should be getting back into what I'm doing tomorrow, live uh, price action or live trading the um, e-mini futures. And uh, hopefully you guys watch that video tomorrow. Take care.